this morning, I want to talk a little bit about the teacher. Amen? And so when we go back to school, you know, we started this series four weeks or so ago. Uh, we had talked about reading. We talked about writing. We talked about arithmetic. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to close out this series is just really just spending a little time talking about the importance of the teacher. Amen? And so how many know that teachers make all the difference in the world? You can go to any school. You can be in preschool. You can be in kindergarten. You can be in middle school. You can be in high school. But teachers make all the difference in the world. Amen? A teacher is a person who teaches, especially in a school. And so a teacher is a person who helps students to acquire knowledge, competence, and virtue. A teacher will help you acquire knowledge, competence, and virtue. And in the kingdom of God, you don't have to have gone to school in order to be a teacher. Amen? And so God can call you to be an informal teacher, and, to, and you can begin to teach someone uh, something about God no matter where they are and no matter where you are and no matter how, how much education uh, that you have. And so if you have a good teacher, they will be able to take the subject matter that you're trying to learn and begin, to, and begin to, to give it to you maybe in bits and pieces so that you'll begin to understand it. And so good teachers want you to know the subject matter. Can I get an amen in here? A good teacher is also able to pinpoint with 100% accuracy where you're falling short. And so I remember having to do math problems. And so when you do math problems, one of the reasons that they make you do math problems is so that they can see your work. Because if you get the answer wrong, they'll begin to show you what part you got right and what part you got wrong, and they'll be able to help you to master whatever the subject matter is. Amen? And so when I began to look back, and I'm just going to give a quick shout out, so y'all have to excuse me, but I am a John Marshall bear. Do I don't know if we have any bears in the house, any bears uh, looking on social media, but I thank God for people like uh, Miss Erlene McCauley and Clara Looper and Miss Cotton and Coach Richard Garrett, Coach Charles Davis. He's gone on to be with the Lord now. Miss um, Alstine Starks was my first computer uh, teacher. And so those are the people that when I look back, they changed my life. And so they don't, even, they don't even teach home ec, I think, in school anymore. But I remember around 1.30 every day, we would always smell chocolate chip cookies uh, because somebody was learning how to cook. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And so when I began to look back, uh, you know, blue and red forever. When I began to look back at just my high school years, I began to really thank God for the people who invested time in me. Because they don't have to do it. And they did it so I could be better, if this is making sense to anybody. And so teachers will help you prepare for life. How many know this? Spiritually speaking, God has given you a spiritual teacher. He's called the Holy Ghost. <laughs> if you don't know the Holy Spirit and you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, I want to specifically invite you to know who he is today. Amen. 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 And so he is a great teacher. And so sometimes we think that the Holy Spirit is hand clapping and foot stomping and shouting and screaming and, and, you know, the hair rises up on our arms and sometimes we get prayed for and, and we're slain in the Spirit. And so, but the Holy Spirit wants to be a teacher to you. Amen. He doesn't want you to make the same mistakes that other people who without the Holy Spirit make. He cares enough about you to stay up at night interceding on your behalf. He cares enough about you that if you didn't make a passing grade, he will allow you to take the test again. And if you don't make a passing grade, what you have to understand is that you have an open book. This is an open book exam. And so thank God for teachers. If you don't mind, just give God praise this morning for teachers. Amen. And so I thank God for the Holy Spirit because he has taught me so much. Amen. I got my high school diploma uh, back years ago, and so uh, I got a bachelor's on top of that. I got a master's on top of that. But I will tell you this, I've learned more about life from the Holy Spirit 
and in his classroom than I ever did in a man's classroom. You know, because, and, and, and let me clarify that, because he taught me about life. How many know that life is a subject matter all by itself? And so it's different than biology, it's different than geography, it's different than all of the other subjects, algebra or science, all the things that we would, that we would learn in school. Those things are good and you should learn them and I'm not knocking education. That's why I started off by talking about going to school, getting your degree, going after that if, if, if the Lord leads you. But you cannot overlook the power of the Holy Spirit as a teacher. Amen. And so if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you are missing out on the teacher that's going to help you succeed in life. Now, I know you thought you had enough to succeed in life, but you don't have enough to succeed in life because when you go to school, you're only going to get what they are able to teach you. You're only going to get what they're able to explain to you out of a textbook. And so one of the things that I love about the Holy Spirit is that he's bigger than a textbook. Let him be a teacher. Let him begin to counsel you. Let him begin to talk to you. Let him begin to uh, un or open up your heart to have a better relationship with God. And so I've got three points uh, this morning just talking about the Holy Spirit uh, as a teacher. And so, because there are some things that he wants to teach you that maybe you hadn't even thought about yet. You're like, what are you talking about, Pastor Randy? There are some times that I have woke up in the morning and the Holy Spirit will begin my day by asking me a question. Is this making sense? See, when you have a relationship with God, and this is the thing, when, when he begins to talk to you, he can pose a question to you in such a way that you're like, I hadn't even, I hadn't even thought about that. I, I, didn't even, I didn't even know. And so, uh, and, and, or you could go to bed at night, and in the middle of your sleep, he'll give you a dream, and he'll begin to talk to you about what's going to happen six months from now. Is this making sense? You know, I remember going to sleep one night, and I had a dream, and the Holy Spirit was talking to me about how to pray for people. Think about that. And so, specifically, it had to do with people who were addicted to substance. He, he told me where to place my hands. Place one hand here and place another hand there. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And so, these are lessons that just don't, I mean, the Holy Spirit has to teach you that. Amen. And so, he'll begin to teach you how to handle your finances. He'll begin to teach you how to handle your finances to a degree that you don't ever get that in a, in a textbook. Is this making sense? I mean, those are the lessons that he wants to teach you. And so now when I pray for people who have had substance, I'm praying for them the way the Lord had showed me in a dream years ago. When God talks, he's teaching. When you go to sleep at night and you have a dream, he's teaching. When you're driving in your car and you have a thought that you know it didn't come from you, he's, he's trying to teach you. He's trying to open up your mind. He, I remember one day I, I was just, I was praying and meditating, and, and the Lord said something, something is so, so simple as, do you know the Word of God is a seed, and the seed acts just like when people come together and have a baby. You know how that seed is sown, and it begins to grow. And from there, my mind began to be open to some other things that He wanted to talk to me about. Is this making sense? He's talking. Are you listening? You know, it's bad when you come to school and the teacher's talking, but you're not listening. Amen? And so, number one, let me give you this. Number one, the Holy Spirit is a transformational teacher. He is a transformational teacher. Number one, the Holy Spirit transforms us into a new creation. That's his job. God was here. God the Father was here. He created the earth. God the Son came and he walked in the precepts that, that God the Father had for him. God, uh, God the Son left and now we have God the Holy Spirit. His job is, is to continue the transformation. When you go to school, the teacher's job is to help transform you. That if you didn't know English and you didn't know grammar and you didn't know algebra and, and you didn't know geography, his goal or her goal is to help transform your mind. And so he transforms us into a new creation. By the time you leave high school, you should be different. 
By the time the Holy Spirit begins to teach you, you should be different. So he transforms us into a new creation. He also transforms us by bringing us into an intimate relationship with God. The Holy Spirit wants to be close to you. He wants his thoughts to be your thoughts and his heartbeat to be your heartbeat. He wants the compassion that he wants to have on humanity to be the compassion that you have on humanity. And so he does that by an intimate relationship with you. In the mornings, you ought to wake up saying, God, I thank you for another day. What, what do you want me to accomplish here today? Does this make sense? When you do that, God will begin to talk to you. I remember years ago, I woke up uh, and I was just, I had some uh, prayer time and I was asking God, like, God, just, um, uh, you know, because, you know, when you get saved as, as a young person, you're just full of enthusiasm. You're like, whatever you want to do today, God, just use me to do it. And so where are the devils? I'm going after the devils today, right? And so, and so I just had a, a prayer like, God, just bless me, be with me. One of the prayers I was praying at that time is, God, that you open up my eyes so that I would see what you want me to do. Because there are so many things that happen in life that God puts in front of you, but sometimes we don't see it because we're so busy because we're consumed on ourselves. And so as I was praying that particular morning, I had just a flash uh, of, and it looked like a rainbow to me because I saw like uh, red and yellow and blue uh, and white. And it was, just, it was just a flash. It was there and then it was gone. And I really didn't understand the meaning of it. I didn't know what it was. And so I just knew that I had prayed and I asked God like, you know, whatever your will is today, whatever you want me to accomplish for you today, let me know. And that's, that's what I saw. And so uh, no sooner that I got up, I went to work uh, I pulled up in our parking lot, and I was walking into uh, my job at that time. Uh, there was a lady, and she was pushing a child in a stroller. And when I looked at the child, he had on a shirt, and it was red stripes, blue stripes, green stripes, yellow stripes, right? And so when I passed the child, I could tell that something kind of wasn't right there, right? And so, but... Being the person in a hurry that I am, I went right by him, got on the elevator, and then it dawned on me, that's what I saw this morning. So, so then I had a dilemma. Would I do what I believe God had called me to do, or would I chalk it up like, well, I missed it this time? You know how we do, like, well... Okay, the Lord will put someone on your heart to pray or put, the Lord will put someone on your heart to say something to, and you don't do it, and then you just chalk it up like, well, you know. How, how many know God is teaching you? And one of the reasons he's teaching, he wants you to be obedient to him, and that's all part of the transformation process. So I was on the elevator, and I'm getting ready to push my floor, but I just couldn't. I couldn't let it go because at some point in time, you're going to have to do what God is calling you to do, whether it's today or tomorrow or six weeks from now. And, and so I, I don't know why I said that, but I know that is for somebody this morning. At some point in time, you're going to have to do what God is calling you to do. That's part of the transformation process. So I ran back out into the parking lot hoping that they wouldn't have left by then. And sure enough, she was still there. She was getting her child out, putting him in the, the car seat in the back. And I said, ma'am, do you mind if I pray with you? And how many know people don't, they don't turn down prayer. So, so I prayed for the mother and the child in the parking lot right there at 4545 North Lincoln, because that's where I was working at the time. And you know what? I went on about my way. So I don't know, I don't know what happened. I just know that I was obedient. And that came as a result of an intimate relationship with God. And here's the deal. When you are obedient to what God is asking you to do, you feel so good. So after that, I went into work. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, because I did what God had called me to do. Because that's part of the transformation process. Say amen to that. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 
verse 17. It says, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. See, see God wants you to be free. He wants you to be free in your thoughts. He wants you to be free in your emotions. He wants you to be free in your worship. Y'all don't want to talk to me. One, one of the reasons I love, I love coming to, to full gospel churches and charismatic churches, because when you shout, they, they don't try to push you in the back. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And, and so some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, maybe because this has been your standard all your Christian life. But some of us, we grew up in churches that when you started shouting, they would kind of shout you right on over out the door. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And so, but there is a freedom in the Holy Spirit. That, that he wants you to experience. He doesn't want you change. And wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, the Bible says there's liberty. There's liberty in your preaching. There's liberty in your giving. There's liberty in your singing. There's liberty in your heart. That, have you ever felt the presence of the Lord where all the chains just went off? And one of the reasons that, that people love and one of the reasons I love coming to church is that there is always a feeling of freedom. I don't care what's going on outside of the walls of the church. I just know that when I leave, I have been empowered to succeed because there's freedom. I get tired of people trying to put me in chains. How many know that people may try to hold you back, but can't nobody hold you? They can't, the devil can't hold you back. Is this making sense? God has freedom for you. Amen. And the Bible says this, verse 18. It says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, notice this, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. You keep looking at him he will keep transforming you. And the Bible says that we're changed. And so notice the Holy Spirit's job is to change us into the image of Christ, where we go from glory to glory. And so the Bible says that we learn line upon line and precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. The Holy Spirit teaches us line upon line and precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, because if he unloaded everything into us, we couldn't handle it. That's why sometimes he'll tell you something at the beginning of the month, and you may not have the full understanding until the end of the month. He may tell you something in 2020 that you may not see the end result until 2022. See, but here's the deal. You, you have to be cognizant of the fact that he's, he's the teacher. He got this thing going on. See, you understand mathematics today, but all that is is a prelude to algebra tomorrow. And when you have algebra, your ninth grade or tenth grade or eighth grade, now you understand what was going on in the first and second and third grade. One of the things that I had a difficult time with, uh, and with having the Holy Spirit teach me, and hopefully you don't make the same mistake, is that I, I wasn't uh, conscious enough to connect the dots. I wasn't conscious enough to, to realize that what happened today is a piece of the puzzle that fits into the overall puzzle for tomorrow. And so sometimes if we look at a puzzle just as isolated pieces, we never get the big picture. God is so big until he, he looks at everything at the same time, but then he gives it to us pieces at a time. And so we have to connect the dots, as it were, if this making sense. And sometimes if you think that what you're going through right now is just an isolated incident, then you really don't understand the bigger picture that God has for you. Because what you're, what you're going through today is a piece of the puzzle and that he's turning into a great masterpiece in your life tomorrow. But you just can't see it because you're looking at one piece. But notice this, if your life is in God's hands and he's teaching you, you will eventually be changed into the image of of God. A good teacher will change you. A good teacher will change you. I remember I had a math teacher, and his name was Mr. McCary. 
And Mr. McCary, and, and, and because of uh, my vision problems, I always sat on the front row. And people with vision problems, you know why we sit on the front row, because we can't see in the back. And so I was clowning on the front row. Mr. McCary came in my face, grabbed my knee as hard as he could, and he said, son, if you don't learn this, you're going to be, and then he said some other stuff. And he caught my attention. I was so embarrassed. And, so, so, and then the pain in my knee, I started crying. But, but here's the deal. Every teacher won't do that. Some people will just let you play. Some teachers might just let you play. And so the Holy Spirit is a teacher that if he lets you play, there's still going to be a lesson behind it. Amen. And so a good teacher will change you. And so they will begin to change your image about you. They'll begin to tell you, you can do that. When you come back saying that's too hard, they're like, oh, no, 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 come by my office tomorrow morning and we'll work through that. And so they, they won't tell you what you can't do and they won't listen to you saying what you can't do. They will begin to help you understand what you can do and they will do all they can to change your image about you. I am praying that the Holy Spirit will begin to change the image that you have about yourself. That he'll begin to deposit something on the inside that when you leave here today, you'll say, oh yeah, I can do that. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. With God on my side, I cannot lose because he's the teacher. And so the Holy Spirit will give you a better image of your Self. I know Christians that need a relationship with the Holy Ghost. They've been saved a long time, but I haven't seen the image change. They, they've been saved a long time, and I'm not being critical. I'm just, I'm just making an observation because we all have to grow. But you've been saved a long time, and you haven't grown. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you so you can grow. Amen. Is this making sense? And so Romans chapter 12, the Bible says this in verse 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The Holy Spirit wants to come after your heart and after your mind. That's why he gives you the thoughts, and that's why he gives you the dreams, and, and that's why the prophet came up to you and spoke a word, and that's why your mama called you and said, you know, I was just thinking, have you ever thought about this? And, and that's why your girlfriend said, you know what, why don't you come to church with me today? And that's why the, your guy friend called and said, I don't know what I'm thinking, you want to go out and, and we need to talk about some things. And so the Holy Spirit is trying to work with, with your mind. And so you will be changed once your mind is changed. Transformed in the Greek comes from the Greek word metamorpho. Metamorpho is where we get our word metamorphosis, where God wants to change you. It's the picture of the caterpillar turning into the butterfly, but that only comes as a result of transformation. And that comes as part of an intimate relationship with Christ. What I'm talking about this morning is just not coming to church. What I'm talking about this morning is having an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And He wants to talk to you. He, he wants to work through you. He wants to gift you so that you can go out and do the work of the ministry. That, that's the transformation that I'm talking about. Is this making sense? And so if you thought like, you know what, I'm getting ready to come to Impact Community Church this morning. We're going to have a good time because I know they're going to be singing. They're going to be dancing. They're going to be shouting. No, no, no. I want you to have a relationship with him. Do you know what's missing in your life? Is an intimate relationship with him. Not your spouse. Not your kids. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Not your mama, not your daddy, an intimate relationship with him. He will teach you things that your mama never taught you. He will teach you things that your daddy couldn't teach you. Because if your daddy don't know, then your daddy can't teach. And for a lot of us, if your daddy wasn't there, he sure can't teach. But you have a teacher who will teach you. Is this making sense? 
And he wants to transform your mind. He wants your mind to be renewed. Say renewed. renewed. He wants you to think differently, walk differently, talk differently, speak differently, sing differently, listen to music differently. Y'all don't want to talk to me. He, he wants you to be more consumed about what he would have you to do than consumed about what you want to do. And so that's having an intimate relationship with him. For a lot of us who are married, you understand what an intimate relationship is, that you should care more about your spouse than you do about you. I just got a couple of amens on that. So I'm going to say that again, right? You should care more about your spouse than you do care about you. That's the way the relationship works. And as soon as your mind is renewed to that fact, your marriage will be better. What husband dislikes a wife who cares more about him than she does about herself? What, what wife doesn't like a husband that's more concerned about her than he is about himself? Those are great marriages. Can I tell you something? The Holy Spirit had to teach me that. Because I, I, I didn't read that in the book. I read that in this book, and then the Holy Spirit began to talk to me more and more and more and more and more about it. Is this making sense? Y'all uh, don't, don't want to. Okay. So, so, so Romans chapter 12, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the ruin, renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Through the Holy Spirit, notice this, you can liter literally experience the presence of God in your natural life because he's the God on the inside of you now. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Matter of fact, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives in you. Amen. And once he lives in you, he begins to illuminate scriptures and he begins to help you apply God's timeless scriptures to whatever situation is going on in your life. Have you ever had something bad happen and before you could cry or before you cried too long, you got a scripture? That's the Holy Spirit trying to teach you. Before your mind started veering right, he came in to ground you with the Word. Does that make sense? That, that's the way. See, he knows how to bring scriptures in the middle of chaos. And so when things don't seem to be going the way you think they should be going, and before your mind gets tainted, he knows how to come in and settle your mind. He's the one that wants to walk with you and talk with you. The Bible says this, John chapter 14, verse 26. It says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. He's a great teacher. Comforter, comforter in the Greek comes from a word and it's called parakletos. So parakletos means one that's called to your side. He's the helper. In some Bible translations, it says he's the helper. He's the comforter. He's called to your side to help you. Para means from close or beside. Kaleo, which is where the, the second part of that word comes, means made to call. The calling of the Holy Ghost is to be at your side. David, come up here half a second. So, so then there is nowhere that you go that he is not there. So wherever you go, you have help. Where, wherever you go, you have a word that's able to give you assurance that wherever you go, he's, you, you got the victory. So and if I'm going to the left and the Holy Spirit says, uh-uh, don't go that way. Because he's intimate enough to tell you, don't go that way. And so you say, well, I stop. And then when you stop, he says, let's stop. And then he says, let's proceed. Y'all want to talk to me? This is his calling. This is what he's called to do. Thank you, Dave. And, and let me say this. He's a helper. 
to whatever you initiate. He's not going to initiate everything in your life. But whatever God the Father puts in your heart, he will help you carry it out. Some of you are at home saying, what am I going to do? This, that, and the other. Pray that God will give you the vision that you need, that he will give you the courage to carry it out. And know this, that the Holy Ghost is going to be there to help you. Because that's his calling. That's his assignment. Paracletos, he is there. He's with you. He's called to help you. So the next time the enemy comes saying, you all by yourself? Don't nobody know what you're going through? It's going to get worse before it gets better. Don't nobody care about you. Ain't nobody called you. Nobody has sent you a text. You say, I still have somebody. I've got a paracletos that he's called to help me. Is this making sense? The, The Bible says that even Jesus said there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You got help in this thing. And the help comes from a great teacher. Amen. And so the Bible says this. uh, It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, notice this, he will teach you all things. Amen. Meaning he'll teach you scriptures. But how many know this, that understanding comes in two parts. The first part is reading, and then the second part is him talking to you. So notice, the Bible says he will teach you, notice this, not some things. And this is why you need him as a teacher. So, so I know a lot of us have gone to school, but I'm here to tell you that they only taught you what they could teach. And they were, they were a master of that subject. But if you got outside of that subject, the teacher at that particular time may not have had the expertise to teach you. But this morning, I'm here to talk to you about someone who is a master in all subjects. He he is a master. He has a doctorate degree in anything affecting you. That's why he's able to teach you in all things. And notice this. This is good for all the people who thought they were losing their memory. He will bring all things. Some of y'all laughing. I'm talking about the people who leave the kitchen table and go into the bedroom and you forgot why you went into the... Y'all don't want to talk to me. And you're like, what did I go in here for? And then you have to go back and sit at the kitchen table and remember why you went into the bedroom. The Bible says he will bring back all things to your remembrance. Now, what goes unsaid is that you first got to put it in you in the first place. So in order for him to bring back it to your memory, you got to have at least put it in there at least one time. Is this making sense? But here's the deal. No matter what comes up in life, you got a teacher that will bring it back to you. Is this making sense? On your worst day, he'll begin to show you a picture of yourself that he gave you five years ago. He'll begin to bring back that vision to you. He'll begin to bring back the anointing that he gave you years ago. Is this making sense? I just love God. I love him. 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 I love the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Bring all things back to your remembrance. So he's here to teach. He, he teaches you all things. He'll bring back your remembrance. You'll go through things and he'll begin to prompt you about things. Is this making sense? Let, let me tell you this. Uh, this, is, this is September. So, so since maybe April... April or May uh, this year, I had uh, been, been um, calling the, the lending institution that uh, handles our mortgage. And so I had talked to them about refinancing, right? And the lending institution that I had called, which, I mean, they have been our lending institution for years, they had gotten uh, out of the mortgage business with regard to refinancing, but they were... Um, doing business with third parties, basically. So my lending institution was the go-between with another institution, meaning that once we went in and made a deal, they were going to sell the note. That's basically, you understand what I'm talking about. So, so I've been going back and forth because I've been ra- watching the rates, and I'm like, hey, this is the deal. This is what we need to do. We need to close. Uh, and so I called the lending institution, and we finally got a rate that I thought was, was good. We called the lady. She met us at the bank. I was 
Tarsha and I were there. We were sitting in the office signing the paperwork to refinance our house. And I felt just something in my spirit where I said, I think the rate's going to keep dropping. And what she said is, well, if we lock in today, then if the rates drop, then we can't offer you that other rate. So I'm looking at Tarsha because, remember, this has been like a three-, four-month process. And I said, well, I just, I don't think we need to sign today. And sometimes when I do that, my wife looks at me like, boy. Because we also take the chance that the rates could go back up. And then we've missed out. Is this making sense? And so, but I'm sitting there and I just, I just didn't feel like, I, I felt like the rates were going to drop. Is this making sense? Now, I don't know about stock market. I don't know about rates going up, rates going down. I know that when they go down and you're refinancing, that's a good thing. So within a week or two weeks, she called us back. And she said, I got good news for y'all. I'm like, well, what's the good news? She said, they had just made a decision at our lending institution that we are going to now take on notes again, mortgages again. And we're getting ready to offer you an interest rate that was cheaper, lower than the one that you were getting ready to. And so I said, well, where do we sign? See, but that's an intimate relationship with the Holy Ghost. Is this making sense? So why have a 2.5 interest rate when you can have a 2.1 or a 1.9 interest rate? Is this making sense? He, he's the only one who knows that. We don't know that. I'm sitting there. All I'm thinking is, I think they're going to drop. Now, I also take the chance that if they don't drop, then we'll have to refinance at a higher rate. Is this making sense? But here's the thing, because this is the Holy Spirit and he's a teacher. You just have patience. Because remember, I've been calling since April anyway. So, so if we didn't get that rate, then we would just wait a little bit longer until they, they dropped again. Is this making sense? But I want you to pay attention to the promptings of the Holy Ghost. That when you get a thought or something doesn't seem, doesn't seem your, your spirit don't have peace about a situation, then, then I want you to listen not only uh, I want you to feel the peace, but I want you to listen also for what God wants to say about it. Is this making sense? <laughs> Let me give you point number two. He is a truthful teacher. Not only is he a transformational teacher, but he's a truthful teacher. The Bible says this in John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Notice this. He will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will begin to help you discern things. He will begin to help you discern people. That people can be saying one thing. You could be in a conversation with people, and as they're talking, the Holy Spirit is talking. Y'all don't want to talk to me. So, so he's the one who leads you into all truth. And so the Bible, uh, when you look up truth in the Greek, it comes from a word aletheia which means truth, but not merely truth as spoken, but truth of an idea or reality or the sincerity of a matter. Because everybody who comes up to you with a good idea saying, Jesus, Jesus, may not be for you. And, and so, that, so that is the real truth of the matter. So while they're talking, he's talking. And if he's talking and it, you're, you're Spirit feels something like, no, nah, I don't know. Sometimes it's not that they're bad. Sometimes it's just mean to wait. Does it make a sense? But the Holy Spirit will guide you into that type of truth. Is this making sense? So, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He has ears that are different than your ears. He hears on a different level than what you hear. Whatsoever he hears, that's what he is speaking. Notice this, and he will show you things to come. 
When you have real truth, then you have reality. He will begin to reveal to you things to come. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or the week after or the month after. Some of us, when we look back, we had no idea what was going to happen in 2020. He did. He prepares you. He'll begin to talk to you about things. Let me tell you this. This is the thing that I want you to understand also, and this is going to give you great comfort, that if you have an intimate relationship with God and there is something that comes up and he didn't tell you about it, it was because he didn't want you to know. Does this make, oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. And I'm saying that because I don't want you sitting here like, well, that happened and God, you didn't tell me. No, no, no. If he didn't show it to you and you have an intimate relationship with him, then that means for whatever reason he didn't want you to see it at that time. Because anything else that comes your way, he reveals it to you. Is this making sense? So he is a truthful teacher. And so his goal is for you to find the truth about everything, about all people, about your boss about your employees, about the girl that's working on the cash register on aisle number six. Y'all don't want to talk to me. And, and this is what I mean by that. Have you ever gone into a grocery store and didn't get the best treatment? Y'all don't want to talk to me. And in the flesh, when they treat you bad, you're going to treat them bad. Until the Holy Ghost says, you don't know what's actually going on in her life right now. And so she probably just did, you know, this, that, and the other and so forth. And he may not go into a lot of detail, but at least he opens up your, your heart to that. She didn't treat you that way because she don't like you. She treated you that way because there's a whole lot of stuff going on in her life. That's the teaching. That's the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let me give you this last, this last point. And so not only is he a truthful teacher, he also gives us the truth in prayer, right? And so he is the truth in prayer. And so how many know that the Bible says this, that the Holy Spirit helps us pray? And so when we can communicate with God through prayer, we get answers to our prayer. Amen. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 8. I'm going to leave you with this. Romans chapter 8. Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. Infirmity is a weakness. For we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So, Pastor Randy, are you talking about speaking in tongues and the prayer language? Absolutely I am. I have a prayer language. I pray in the Spirit. Some, some people may not. I understand, uh, but it's here for you, right? And, and so we don't have time to get into uh, an exhaustive uh, biblical uh, uh, teaching on speaking in tongues. But uh, that was actually something that we were supposed to do this year in our Wednesday night Bible study, but we didn't have a chance to. But we'll come back to that. But it is for you. Amen. So whether you choose to or not, the Bible says the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we know not what we should pray as we ought. I have found myself plenty of times praying for the wrong thing. You could be praying for a car, and you need to be praying for your kids. You could be praying for a job, and you need to be praying for health. You don't know. And so, but the Holy Spirit knows. And that's how he begins to prompt you in prayer. Notice this. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which can't be uttered. There are times that you could get up and walk around your house, and you could say something like this. And let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Because the Bible says this, we don't know what to pray for. I will tell you this, after you pray, I, I can't tell you how many times 
that we prayed in the spirit and God had us pray in the natural about whatever it was we were praying for in the spirit and we didn't know. Is this making sense? I remember, I'll, and I'll close on this. My wife and I, we were in the car one day and we were, I was just praying in the Holy Ghost. And I've shared this before. And, and uh, I was praying and, and after I finished praying, I had a thought uh, because before then, um, my wife had uh, gotten a ticket, right, from the police. And so we were driving. I think she was speeding. She got a ticket. And how many know you have so many days to pay the ticket? Is this making sense? After praying, I was just in the car, and I said, hey, did you ever uh, pay that ticket? And she was like, oh, my goodness, I forgot all about it. And I think it happened to be like one day or so before you know, because how many know if you don't pay your ticket? How many know it's not good for the first lady to, to uh, they have a, a warrant for the first lady. That, that's not good. And so, so, but those are the things that just, that came through prayer. Just, just a quick prayer. And the next thing you know, I was like, I was prompted to ask that question. See, when the scripture says we don't know what to pray for, sometimes we don't know what to pray for. If all you're praying for is you and your family, you don't know all there is that God wants you to pray for. There are times that you'll be praying for a situation and praying that God would change that person. And in prayer, God will show you that it's not that person. (laughs) Y'all don't want to talk to me. It's not that person, but it's this person. How many know you can't change other people? You can just, you can change the response you have to what goes on in your life, but you can't change other people. God has an intimate relationship waiting for you. He wants to teach you some things. He wants to teach you about people. He wants to teach you about leadership. He wants to teach you about how to grow. He wants to teach you about how to to deal with people who are ungodly and then also to deal with people who have attitudes. Just because they have an attitude don't mean you should have one. How many know that comes through his teaching? Is this making sense? There are some things that the Lord, let me, let me, I'm just going to go through some of these things because the Lord has just put this in my heart. And so, He could teach you about being a teenager and then being a young adult and then being an older adult. See, those are life lessons that everybody has to learn. Does this make sense? That now you are a teenager, and if you allow God to open your heart and talk to you, he'll, he'll show you how to be the best teenager you could be. And then when you become a young adult, and then as you become an older adult, one of the things that I pray for, especially as Uh, I get older, uh, is that I'll be able to age gracefully. That I won't be the old person looking back at the younger people jealous. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me in here. You envious and jealous of someone who maybe is doing what you wanted to do and never did or whatever the issue is. Or you get to be 55 and the next time you see me, you're like, what's going on with Pastor Randy? Because his collar's popped out. He got like five gold chains on. Because that's called a midlife, because people don't know how to deal with that. There, there, are, there are mothers that are still going to clubs with their daughters. They both wearing halter tops. And you like, the devil is. They, they don't know how to, to age gracefully. Does it make sense? But the Holy Spirit can teach you. He can teach you about being single, married and divorced, and remarried. He has guidance for you. Is this making sense? If you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to lead you through a simple prayer because without Jesus Christ, there is no way you can connect with the Holy Ghost. You can't connect with the teacher that I've been talking to you about for the last 45 or 50 minutes. And so I want your life to be better but your life is only going to be better as your mind is transformed. Lift your hands in here. Hallelujah. 
If you don't know Christ, repeat this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come as a sinner in need of a Savior. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if I would confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I would be saved. Father, I thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. While your heads are still bowed, Father, we thank you for everyone who is assembled today, O oh God. We ask for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit today to be our teacher, to be our guide. God, wherever he steps, we want to follow. Whatever he does, we want to resemble what he does. God, we thank you for allowing him to change us into the image of Jesus Christ, Lord. And we just thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. You said that we would have power after the Holy Ghost has come into our lives, Lord. And we just thank you. We praise you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God hand praise. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Impact Community Church is located at 4400 Northwest Expressway, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in the Cole Community Center. We would love to have you come worship with us. Our service time is at 1030 a.m. on Sundays. We pray this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like to sow into the ministry, we have three options for you to give. You may go to our website at www.impactcc.org, text to give at 405-266-5020, or you can mail a check or money order to Impact Community Church, P.O. Box 121, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73101. 